string you have? Sorry, um, the program said it wasn't going live because we had storage problems and it's gone live. I did not know. Please give me one minute. Um, dear Lord Jesus Christ. Yep. Just. God almighty. Sums up my Monday. You need to update your birth. Cool beans. Great to note. Um, you can see my hair. I realize that it's going more blonde by the minute or by the week. Right, there we go. Okay, we're here. Hello, D, Sandy, Diane, Karen L, Diane D, Debbie Higgs, Trish. Um, Pam, yeah, <laughs> um, it said it was out of storage and then came here, oh, hello to the people on YouTube, um, hello to everyone else who's watching and can't comment, I understand there's a few of you, um, I was watching this later, so, right, we've got a few things we can use tonight, uh, sorry about the rush to get here, a uh, bit of a chaotic start to class, anyway, we're here. So we've got a new chipboard title, which is Cutie As Can Be, or oh, Cute As Can Be, not Cutie, Cute As Can Be, which makes more English sense. We've got these flowers that Dad's writing for pond flowers, but Mum and I are writing for froggy flowers because look, they look like little hands, like little frog hands going like, help me bees. Like, you can just imagine like a pond of water there. I think we might actually do that. Like, look, look how cute they are. It's like, help me! I can imagine it now. And we can do it over here. The cutest can be over there. Don't panic here. Yeah. <laughs> Pay me money in about five seconds. Ago. Oh, you probably were actually, because we were live! Ah, during the panic attack. Yeah, yeah, they look like frog hands. And then we've got this big splash, which is actually called a big abstract shape. And this is called Abstract Print 1, because, you know, I think we're going to use the big one tonight. Because I just think it will look cool with our froggy hands. But I do like this small one. Kind of reminds me of flowers. You know? But, yeah. And they aren't perfect ovals. I don't know if you can see that clearly. So you get an organic shape with them, which is quite nice. But we're not going to use this one tonight. Think we're going to come and use the big one because I think it will look quite cool if we do it this one. So let's just put this off to one side and let's start, shall we? So we're going for a pond theme if you haven't guessed. So I'm thinking like a blue with a nice light pink and like a little bit of flick of orange. 
if you get what I mean, and a bit of green, like like a greeny type blue um, situation. And I think the best way to apply the paint on is actually if, hmm, I'm just trying to think. There's multiple ways we could go about doing this. There's just so many ways. Okay, so what we could do, here we go. Mm, yep. I'm going to show you two different ways that we could apply watercolour on here quite naturally without having to do too much work. So let me see if I've got the tools to do this after spraying my page water. A bit of a moment. You can tell I'm organised. I am coming in with to this with a plan, by the way. I know it doesn't seem like it, but I am. Kind of. It's just that I pin it on my watercolors myself. I don't exactly know why. Right. Not a smart move by me. Anyway, here we go. So the page is now soaked up the water, which is what we wanted. Oh, hello, Karis. Love the small one. Almost looks like fluttering butterflies. It does, doesn't it? It is quite cute. I do like it, but I think for the page tonight, this might look a little bit better. And you'll see why in a second. So we're just going to come in. Oh, we've got that wet. We might have to wet it a little bit more because we've left it too long now. My fault. So we've got this way here, which we've got a book on an angle and our page is just a little bit wet. We come and apply watercolour. And it will automatically blend because it's got the page is already wet. Now, the pros and cons of this, your page is going to get very wet very quickly, as you can see. My page is already very wet. Also, the watercolour isn't going to be that opaque. Like, you're going to have to do lots of layers with this technique, which could look cool and interesting. Continue going with this page, and then I'll show you the other way of applying, like, a watercolour type layer to the other page. Both are pretty simple. It just depends which one you prefer. I do try and avoid this method just because the paper can become a bit more like paper mache and um, it can get very difficult of knowing when to stop before it's too late. Oh, hello, Annie Robin. And sometimes the page um, does soak up the water too fast and then you have to apply more water anyway. So it is that. So as you can see, that page is very wet. Like we've pushed it to the verge doing it. And it's going to dry actually quite light. The colours aren't going to be that. Can someone remind me what the fussy cutting is for this week's Q's Farm? Oh, great question. I would have to go and watch the kit reveal for that one. Um, I'll look into it. Mum will come out and check on us bound too. So, you know, that's one more check on that one. The other option is 
is what we do is is we come in with our watercolor pencils and these are not the colors that we want so just give me five seconds Here we go. So we come in with watercolor pencils on a completely dry page. And we basically color it in. Now, if you're not sure on where to stop and start with your colors to make it look like a, like a nice gradient, like this one here, as you can see, we've made it into a gradient type thing what you can come and do is, is you can grab one of your stencils like this one here which is a bit of an abstract shape sometimes it works with non-abstract shapes um abstract shapes are just easier you come and do is we can just color it in and it doesn't have to be perfect coloring in Depends on how fast you want to get it done, how dark you want it. You don't want to push too hard either because you definitely want the watercolour to still to move. So we're just coming in. So this um, way, this technique avoids putting on lots of water first. So it means that if you are scared of having a very wet page like this one here, that's okay. You can do this method and you'll get kind of the same result. Um, it would just be less water and it might be a little bit more structured, but that's okay. And we can come and fill the gaps in with our watercolor pencil. And we can go over the other color that we did already. Or what we can do is, is we can grab the stencil again. And we can come into a different position. And let's say we grab our yellow. This is a bit more. I'm just going to double check that this is a watercolor. Yeah, it's a watercolor. So I've got all different branded watercolors. And I've got three more not branding than my watercolors. Because I've got them over multiple sets. That's why you've got a bit of a mismatch set. But it also proves that all watercolour pencils are quite the same. Some are a little bit chalkier than others. Just depends on when they get them made. Doesn't matter too much. I'm not going completely over the blue with this yellow. I'm trying to avoid the blue because it is watercolour pencil. So it will pick up the lead that's already down below it. And smudge it in with your tip. So... We are trying to avoid that with our yellow because obviously yellow is lighter than blue and that could um, make it to be a pencil green, which you can get what um, you can get rid of that by sharpening it and anything like that, but it's just easy to avoid it in general at the beginning. I am worried that this bit here is already wet, so it won't work particularly well in this corner. It does have to be a dry page for this to work. And it's just about coming in and filling in the gaps. I do like this stencil though. I do agree with you that it is a nice stencil. We were going to do, because um, in the Zoom last week, a lot of you, uh, some of you request bees and stuff like that. We were going to do um, a bee set. Unfortunately though, I got the spacing wrong, so it just ended up being blobs. So I've got to go back in and fix that file up. Because, yeah, no one wants blobby bees. Oh, hello, Diane G. So we're just coming in.
Do I have a green? Just give me one minute. I did have a green four color pencil. I just don't know where it's gone. We might just borrow mum's set of it, so we do need some green so that it matches the other side. We are trying to. What's the same as that one? Here we go, this is green. Uh, let's see, I'm just trying to get it. Those pond like colours. Oh, hello, Deborah. So we're just coming in. This one here does take a bit more work to do before you add the water, but it does end up being less wet. Less wet. Also, we're going to try doing picking techniques currently just because I've got an antique table directly behind me and if I get paint on that I will be disowned so yeah so you just came from a great great Great. Came from one of my German relatives. Came over from Germany. So, you know, can't get paint on it. I'm going to put one more color pencils separately. Right. So, we've got our page pretty much filled. And you can't tell, but the stencil's in there. Oh, you can kind of. We've got that bit there and that bit there. Right. So, we need a paintbrush thicker than this. So we're going to be here for a while. And then, what I'm going to come and do. With it fairly soaked, like it's not dripping, but it is wet. It's coming, coming. And we want to make sure when we do this that none of our colours are going to make brown when we mix them. Or if they are, we're fully prepared and we've already got brown on the page, which we do. Because we did put a bit of purple on there just to get a bit of a darker tone in some areas. Which means that... Um, we will get a little bit of brown if the purple and green ever meet, which they might. So. Hedging our bets, we added a bit of brown. You can come in and you can do strokes this way and this way. You could do them diagonal as well if you want it. It's up to you. You don't have to apply it, uh, the pencil on through the stencil. However, you can do that um, if you just don't know um, what type of padding you want to do, if you don't want to do it on a normal grid. It's completely up to you. Some people spend all this time rolling out grids. Like, it's up to how much you want it to, how you wish it to look. But that's the, I think you can see the clear difference. We're going to dry this with a heat tool so that you can see the difference right now of how dark it will dry compared to the other one. Like this one here looks quite dark right now, but that's because it's got all of its colour wet. So we're just going to come in and dry them. Uh, yeah, so this art journal, uh, sorry, I don't know if you can hear me over the heat tool. I've never actually checked, but I always took when I use the heat tool for some reason. Um, this art journal is made from watercolor paper. So as you can see, this is watercolor paper here. It's actually quite good watercolor paper, but we have wet it that much on the first page with this technique that it starts to become like a pulpiness. So yeah, can't really add anything more to it until we heat tool it, definitely. Whereas this one here, we definitely have still like a couple of layers that we could add here and have no trouble at all with the paper. So the watercolour pencil, like I said, less water in it. So, um, uh, both techniques though should really be done on watercolour paper. If not, just so beforehand.
So I'm just drying where the wet patches are. You can see you can see where it's come through the back. So we're just drying those bits particularly. And drying from the back means that we'll get some more of the paper quality back. Right, so now I guess you can clearly see, oops, sorry, I'm just trying to put my heat tool somewhere where it's not going to um, touch anything because I've currently got a few projects going. Um, so you can currently see, so this one here comes out a lot lighter, as you can see the blending isn't still 100%, um, whereas the watercolour pencil, it comes out dark, darker um, by the end of it. And our page, as you can see, has dried a lot quicker. Like this one here is still drying. So it is up to you guys on what you do. Like I said, I prefer this one most times, um, except in summer, because in summer I can do this technique in central Queensland and not have to worry about the wetness too much. Um, but this one here I definitely prefer during autumn and winter times uh, with the watercolour pencils. Uh, the... Uh, thing is, is that if you are going to do this on canvas or normal paper, definitely gesso it first, uh, which is just priming it. That's what priming means. Uh, you just go and prime your page with a layer of gesso, leave it overnight before you do anything to it, and then come in with your techniques both. Uh, that way then it just gives it a bit of extra strength, a bit of security around it, 100% uh, guarantee, no paper mache type thing going on there um yeah because if you are worried that your material will uh like not be in one piece by the end of it because the water will just make it break um yeah prime gesso works every time right so we just need this to dry for a few more seconds but while we let that happen I'll show you why the heat tool couldn't go exactly next to it, and it's because this bad boy is still setting. He is my train. I have been working on him for weeks. Well, uh, not just this one. I've had a few test dummies before him. And as you can see, I eventually got I got really confused on my first few test dummies, so I've done a light map, and this is him in the test stage. I want him to be a bit bigger. I'm doing this for a... Um, it's kind of like a competition, but it's where your artwork gets hung if you get selected in town here. Um, and I don't normally do industrial pieces, so, you know, I thought this would be cool. Uh, I now dislike trains fully, so, you know, beforehand I thought they were amazing because of all the cogs in them and stuff. But now, not so much. I'm going to admit to you, there are so many bits to a train. I did draw it by hand too, but, yeah, it's just not fun. Uh, I really should have thought about how long it was going to take me before going ahead. But yep, hindsight, I do not have. So let's go ahead, shall we? Now this is just a little bit more dry. No, 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 it's an actual train. So it's like an actual drawing of a train. It's the standard diesel fitter that they carry the coal on. Because this, this bit here stops it from overheating. And then that there's the towel gate. And then this one here is where the extra parts sit underneath. Yeah. It's an actual train. I did not design it. I do not claim to design trains. Um, yeah. Uh, so that's what I've been working on. That's why you haven't really been seeing me post anything outside of what I paint in my classes because I have literally been drawing trains every weekend when I have when I have a spare weekend. I didn't do it on gigs all the weekend before that, but I did 
Uh, but yeah, so, you know, every spare weekend since about April, which is, it's killing me. I will admit to that. It is not a fun one, but uh, it should look good in the end, which is the main thing. Well, it's been a good learning experience. Um, it's not really the main thing. It's just, it's a good learning experience. Good to try something different. And let's see if this is dry enough for us to add an next layer of watercolour so that you guys don't have to hear me talking about trains any longer. Because we do not come here to hear about trains. We come here to watch me paint and for me to try and explain it in English, which doesn't always happen. But anyway, let's go. So now I do think that I'm going to turn these little flowers, these froggy flowers, into frog hands. I've got like a whirlpool here with maybe some like modeling paste for dimension coming up at each bit with a little like help me and QCAS can be just here with some waves coming out of it so I do think for this to work I need some splashes in the background like some of these bad boys so I want my hands to be central here so on this page which means that this is going to be like the main splash here and it does need to lead from here to here so we need a little bit on this page i agree not easy drawing machines <laughs> did that with a truck someone asked for me to do the truck he drove so much little things on them i know i did not realize how many little details there were on them um yeah yep 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 it was one of those moments which I may be slightly regretting, but anyway. So, like I said, I want these to be like the main focus, but I definitely want it to connect it to this page because we have such a large contrast now between how deep our colours are. We definitely need to um, try and blend it out a little bit. Uh, well, balance it out a bit because, yep, like don't get me wrong, I love both of them, but right now they look like two separate things. We need to just kind of in the middle so we're gonna try and make it so we elongate our stencil design by putting it so then we've got the longest diagonal point which is this one here with the bigger pieces because bigger pieces make it seem bigger well the bigger pieces make it elongated whereas if we did this way even though this way is technically longer because there's lots of small pieces in it it doesn't actually look like that so we want to do it this way because the bigger pieces actually make it look bigger than what it is and have it so then our hands will be sitting kind of in the center here oh hello Laura and then come in and do one up here maybe in a lighter color like the yellow to connect this yellow in and then redo our one that's here but have it so then it is lighter than this one here which will be a bit of a challenge so we will be mixing I think some white with our watercolor on this one here so let's draw, come in and draw this one. Now we've got our position. We can move our little froggy hands, which are technically flowers, but we are using them as frog hands tonight. And let's just come and outline this first. And then we're going to do this one up here as well. Right, there we go. So we're just going to come in and colour him in. This page is still a little bit wet, so this watercolour pencil isn't exactly going to move, so we're going to add more watercolour to it for it to move. It's kind of like, you know when you get a permanent marker type situation, and then you're going to put pen over top of it on a whiteboard marker and a whiteboard to remove it. It's going to be like one of those, but it's going to be to blend it. Just coming in. Super simple, there we go. Now we're going to add the other ones in before we add some more water to the page. This just gives us even more time for this one here to dry a little bit more because like this one's already completely dry. So we're going to come in 
We want this bit up here to seem small. So we're going to go in with our smaller bits. And let's use, do you reckon the yellow? Yeah, we do need to add in the yellow that's over that side or else it's going to look very odd. Well, unbalanced, not exactly odd, just unbalanced. It's not going to look, it's not going to be easy to focus on. Come in. So the yellow is a bit harder to see, but that's okay. And it's leaving it open. So we're doing it up here in the corner. It leaves it open for the frog hands here and for this bit here. So it doesn't, if we did it here, it wouldn't exactly lead over. It would more like go like, duf, duf, and then it'll be like, oh, look over here. So by doing it here, we're able to get more of that flow that we're really aiming for with this bit. So just thinking about that, it's okay if you want to like change the positions of it. Honestly, it's all up to you guys. And then like, we can kind of see where our one of that one is. We do want to make it just a tingy bit... Uh, well, no, our hands will be green. I think. Yeah, we'll see how we go. We want to make this one here a bit lighter. We can already see where that one is, which that's okay. And then we want to add in... Our different blues here. So we're just coming in. And the reason why we're adding this in now is so then we can blend it out as we go. And this means that we'll um, add less water to this page, which is really crucial because we have already got a really wet page on this right-hand side. I know I keep saying that, but it is, like, up to the point where it's questionable if we should really add more water to it. So definitely if you are going to do the left-hand side technique, well, no, the right-hand side technique, um, leave it overnight. Leave it for a couple of hours. Do it before you go to work. Come back. Um, you know, and then add more to it. And you might need a heat tool before you do that as well. But yeah, so just um, try and give it as much time as possible. I'm just grabbing some more of mum's um, watercolour pencils just because mine is a little sharper than mine. That's literally the only reason. Okay. I do think I'll be painting my frog's hands green. So. I know that's a bit different for me. And we've got our three watercolors there as well that we can add in. So let's go in and we want our loop de loops to be the darkest bit here. So we're just going to come in. And blend those first. So you can see we didn't have a really wet brush like the last time when we activated our watercolor pencils and then we're just going to come in with our darkest pan watercolor do it on the edge and then scrape it across and up
There we go, just blending it out a bit more. Come in, we do this bit. Go, look how pretty that is. Okay, and I just did like kind of a bunch of technique there, so then it becomes a bit more of a water pattern. Just did that by lifting the paintbrush up and down with the darker hand. The stencils and chipboards are live. Straight after class, you will have to make your uh, bundle. Your bundle. Okay. Cool beans. The new stencils and chipboards are live. People. Oh, mom! Before you go, yeah. a few other ladies are wondering. Do you know what the fussy cutting homework for this week was? Uh, it's in the album. It's in the album. Yeah, it's in the album for this week on the group. I'll go and have a look. Thank you. It's in the album. It's in the album? Yeah, it is in the album. Oh, it's in the album, people. Uh, yeah, uh, watercolors and gelatos are kind of the same thing, so you can definitely use them this way. Uh, they are a bit more cakey. So, yeah. But we could use for gelatos one night. I will put that down. And the, ble the bee stuff is coming. It's just, we spoke about bees last week on the Zoom. I just, yeah. We had them designed. I didn't have enough space in between all the little segments and the hives and stuff. And they looked like blobs. I wasn't happy with them. So we're doing one of the splashy ones tonight. Anyway, I think the bee one would be good as a card. So, card center. I have an idea, it's in my head. I just need to get it out and then it will be all good. And hopefully it doesn't end up being like the train. Okay, there we go. Is that there? Is the first layer to that splash. And no, I haven't done the bits around it yet because I'm going to wait for that to dry and then do the bits around it. And as you can see, gives us a nice center to our piece there. See? Ooh. So we're just going to leave that one. Those ones to dry. And we're going to come and do these two now. Paper 5 so, and paper 6. Paper 5 and paper 6. Yeah. Fussy cutting for this week, ladies, if you do the um, subscription classes, is paper 5 and paper 6. Uh, Naomi fussy, Naomi's Fussy Cutting Services are currently closed until she updates her glasses, which will not be for a while. Because I've got Melbourne. 
and then um, I've got oh that's all good Pam and then we've got uh, and then I've well I've got a dentist appointment where I have to get braces so I'm currently got all my savings going towards that but yeah apparently my drawer is too small so I have to remove some teeth and widen it all do something it's all outing you know but yeah I thought why not it's best to do it while I'm younger too they said so yep I'm gonna get that done and then by November I should be able to go and get my glasses checked Will mean that I'm over a year. But, hmm, not too bad. I just don't trust myself with other people's stuff currently. It's, it's mainly the reading section that needs updating. It's because I look at computers a lot all day um, for my remote job. So yeah. Uh, the job I do for my parents actually doesn't hurt my eyes. Which is nice okay so there we go so we've got that yellow one up there but I've turned into more of a brown I definitely think I need to add some white but we're gonna pelt knife that out before we um, go oh no that's the more that's, that ain't gonna work be a bit thick so let me just open up my white and let's pelt knife some of this out grab my pelt knife Oh, my little sister borrowed my pelt knife. It's a great time to remember that now. So sorry. Let me just fix that problem. So we're just going to come in. And just with a little bit of white, add it to the colour we've already got down. And then with our yellow, we're going to do tip to tip. Go. Just made them a little bit initially too brown. Just trying to line them up. Thank you. 
There we go. So I did accidentally make them brown. So I've come in and I've added yellow. I've added white to the base again and then added two to three kinds of yellow. I think I was actually three kinds of yellow. Two watercolour pencils and then the pan. And then I've gone in again with some white to get that blending there. There we go. And that just lightens it up. So we're going to come and do kind of the same type of thing without first making a brown over here because we've already got the dark blue down. Oh, we just run our finger through one of them. Fixed. Okay, we're all good. All right, let's come and do this bit. I won't even be able to see that by the time we finish. All right. We're just going to come in, a bit of white paint, and a paintbrush. We're going to start at the tips. So, kind of in the center point. Okay. This will be a bit over the hour mark, by the way, people. Just a lovely heads up. I am kind of editing it a little bit. Go. Sorry, I'm not speaking that much. I'm just coming through and I'm kind of doing the same blending type thing. It's just a case of adding white along one edge and the watercolour along the other. And getting it to blend in between. Okay. 
this bit here is easier to do with pen or cake sets, not the wet pencils, just because uh, if you were going to do it with the pencils, you're going to do tip to tip, and that would be you might accidentally destroy the lead by how much ink you need from that pencil. And if you accidentally got white paint on the tip as well, wet, it would dry there. And that would be one of the risks you would run. Alright. It's just coming in. And there we go. So it's a bit lighter there now. We're going to leave this side to dry and then come and do around this splash zone here. And then come in and do around these two splash zones. So it's just about going around and around the page with this type of thing. And I've put like my white paint right where I need. Video not working. Uh, is that the case for anyone else? Maybe reload the page. Um, uh, it's working on all three of the devices I have it open on right now. Um, I mean, it's one of those is recording it. Uh, anyone else's not working? Maybe refresh. We are over on YouTube as well, so if your device is struggling with Facebook, you can hop over to the YouTube. Um, or to YouTube, not the YouTube. I'm good here. Yeah, um, that might be a device. Facebook is having a few connections of like, because they are due for a update. The word that we all dread. Right. So I'm just going to come in and add some acrylic paint. It's the Art by Marlene Sky and I've just added some white paint to it. It's just to help me go around. without wetting it too much and then I can do that and then do that
Yeah. Um, though it might just be internet. Okay. Right. So I'm just grabbing a little bit of this sky up by Marlene paint on the dry tip of the paintbrush. Just coming in. It's just to make a little bit like a water current and by having it dry and putting it over wet a, a wet area it means that the colors underneath are going to blend with it just a little bit more especially that white paint we just put down but the watercolor is just dry enough to keep to its own which is good because we get to keep that splosh that we really worked on. We just come in and on these circle ones we've just made it here. Just come in. There. Let it drop. Go. It's just about coming and applying it around where the curves are at the widest point and letting it drop. And we're not adding a new blue here, we're adding the darker pan blue that we've already added to these ones, to the swoosh below it, so it blends in well. It's not like we're adding a completely new colour to the colour palette. Okay, just kind of make it like a murky mess.
Garp. Just going to add some light in over here just to blend it out to there. It's blue here. We've got our pan wet enough that we can stick our finger in it. There we go. And then up here, so we kind of have it like it's an actual thing, and then up here we're going to add in some white. Okay, and then there we go, look at that. There we are, so just bending it out from our sun, well from our yellow splosh. And then what I'm going to come do is add just a little bit of this lightness right here. And just before that's what we've got so far. I think it looks quite nice but just before we go around this one here with our green I think what we're going to go in I, we're just going to go and do our chipboard because this bit here is not quite dry just yet so I just want it to be a little bit more drier before we go ahead and do that one. So we're just going to grab our chipboards Oh, night, Sandy. Yeah, sorry, it's going over the hour tonight. Uh, I am trying. We've been for a few different watercolor things, so you know, we did also have the hiccup at the beginning. So we're just coming in. We're painting our froggy flowers slash fog hands in this case. Just a bit of white paint. Be back to add some more white paint to those in a minute. And we'll come and do as cutie as can be here. Yes, can be. There we are. Okay. Oh, Pinky D. Right. 
Yeah, we got some color. Uh, these frog hands. So we're just going to grab a piece of paper. Just grab a tag to do this on because I don't want to get it on my actual workspace. You know what's so odd? Hmm, I might turn it on yet. Right. So there are our two frog hands. And they just need a bit of darker green at the bottom, I think. Okay, and then we're going to set these on the frame. So then they can dry while we do the next bit of blending. And I'm just going to put that off to one side and we'll make a take out of that. And that's the kitty as can be painted white. Also chucking up him up on the frame to dry. Now let's come in. And with our green. Because our frog hands are going to be green. Just going to come in Okay. Turn similar to the other. Bits and pieces. Okay, 
And I'm gonna think I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna come in with some white on her finger and blend it over, just so that it doesn't look a hundred percent like. It's a bit more blendy, blendy, I guess. Sorry, my English kind of cuts out at eight, which is why we try and finish these glasses before it gets eight. Uh, yep. It is what it is. Just a bit more in there. Okay, I do like. Now let's just come in with a yellow pen. Yeah, I think we're going to come and do. So we're just going to add in a few. Yellow details. Can see there. Just gives it a little bit more. And by doing all this blending, is what we're actually doing is kind of creating a mini landscape. green pen next then we're just gonna come and do them up here now That's that one. Okay, and now I do you think those dots just add a little bit that's needed? And then let's find black if not we'll be using a fine liner right, there we are paint marker is a bit safer just as a heads up moment because that page is still wet fine liner would be a little bit dangerous and then we just want to kind of get our curves right here so we're just Come in. Oops. 
too much. I think I went a bit too far there. So we can just come and rub the lines a little bit if we need to. Should just come and add a little bit of water. Where is sponge? I knew it needed it, but I'm just not a hundred percent sold on it. Uh, I need a both white and dark. That's what the black lines looks like. They were out of place. See? I'm not a hundred percent mad just yet. Ooh. Right. Let's come in and stick our words down, shall we? And our froggy hands. So this is what it looks like so far. And we're just going to come down, come now and stick our chipboard items on. So we've got cute as can be there. My hands didn't go exactly quite as green as I wanted them to. Hmm. Okay, one minute. We will fix this. This needs this bit here needs to be a bit darker. Thank you guys. And these hands just need a bit more colour in them. I was hoping the Lindy's Mist would do it because it was like the perfect colour, but I do understand that it didn't. Like it is an ink, so sometimes it does happen. It needs a few coats. I'm not that patient. We don't want to be here until midnight. Let's add the watercolour on there by hand. I'm going to make this bit a bit darker so then the white stands out a bit more on that blue and that green. There we go. Okay. Make sure it blends out nicely. Yep. Takes that box. Excellent. And now what we want to do is we want to grab our gel medium, which I've done on this disc. Other day. I'm just going to heat to this real quick.
cute. So we're just giving, now we're going to put the cutest as cute can be, a fairly good coating of our gel medium matte. It's just one dot. And we stick it down. There we go. No glumpies, see? No glumpies. And then what we might do is, where is our green paint marker? We just had it. Yeah. Had a bit of this green to our hands. This one. as dark as what I hoped they would have been I will completely be honest there so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add white paint up here where they're going to stick the top bit up and then add a dot of our gel medium of his foot a bit yeah get it to mix just the teeniest bit with our gesso or our white paint and then stick this one on top there this one on top of here Do you think we're nearly done? I don't know if I should write help me on it. One minute. Like, I think it'd be really cute if we put help me there, but just not a hundred percent on it. Just give me one second. Just gonna grab out a small bit of modeling paste. And then grab our plastic packet that we are working on. It's kind of makeshift palette. And then if we just add, I want it to be fairly dark, but similar to the watercolour cards we use, and this is quite similar to the watercolour cards we use, but we'll make it dark quite quickly. There we go, see? Um, also ink is better to, ink and paint is better to mix in with our modelling paste rather than watercolour and I just don't have any dark blue paint currently well not easily accessed accessible right now because I forgot to set up my paint area after two very long weekends of, of teaching classes so that, that is my fault completely so yeah okay and then we're just going to come in cover the base 
Mr. Froggy's hands. Let's just scrape this along. This part of it. And then come and scrape this one along up here with the white. Okay, and we're just coming in and adding a little bit of blue. Adding a bit of blue to here. And we're slowly blending out. I know these things kind of backwards because we added the modeling paste last, but just so that it covered the edge, the end of our hands, and just coming in and making sure all makes sense. And there we go. Whew. I know that was a bit of a long one, an hour and a half. Truly sorry that it went for so long. But I think it was necessary. Because it just... Looks... As I say that, I'm adding more paint something a bit different compared to what we normally do I think um I do like it I hope you guys like it I think it's quite fun you could write like help me over there if you think they're frog hands if not you could imagine them as flowers um but yeah so that there is our class for tonight mum will be back at 9.30 tomorrow morning for card making in our subscription group and then at 7 p.m tomorrow on um, wednesday night for our scrapbooking class and then on uh friday we will be at 7 p.m on the main uh facebook page and our main youtube channel for our Friday night live. We have Super Saturday in store this weekend for any ladies who are able to attend. No kids allowed. Uh, starts at 3 p.m. BYO dinner. It'll be a fun night. Uh, and I feel like there was something else I was supposed to say. I think retreat bookings are closing soon. And uh, I've nearly made it through the whole list. I'm not lying. Like, I think there's only one item that I've forgotten. Uh... Nope. Mm, maybe. Mm. No, I think I got everything, actually. Okay. Right here. There you go. But thank you all for watching. Thank you for watching this later. Um, thank you for your lovely comments on how the page turned out. I think I'm, re I'm really happy with it. I hope you guys are, too. 
Uh, by the looks of it, you are. Um, I hope you give it a go. I'm going to make the mixed media bundle for this. The separate products are available now, including the very small baby one that looks a bit more like flowers. We did use the big one tonight, uh, but we did use the big one, so that will, will be included in the mixed media bundle and not the small one. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go and make the mixed media bundle. The photo will be of this page here tonight on it. And yeah, uh, I'll see you all during the week because I'm scrubbing on Wednesday like usual. So have a great night and see you all then. Bye.